Hello once again. Um, we are talking about axial skeleton development, and the topic uh, we are going to discuss now is the vertebral column. Uh, in this subsection, we are talking about vertebrae and the intervertebral discs, the vertebral column as a whole, and its clinical correlates. So, uh, vertebrae. They develop from the sclerotomes of the somites. Um, the, a vertebrae has a vertebral arch, a foramen, a body. This is the body of the vertebrae. A transverse process. This is the transverse process and a spinous process. Foramen usually lies in here. I cannot show you from this picture. Um, you must have seen a vertebrae in your um, um, anatomy lab. If not, go get a vertebrae and try to make out these parts on a vertebrae. So, uh, during the fourth week, the sclerotomal cells <coughs> migrate around the notochord and the spinal cord. They merge with cells from the opposite sides. With development, the sclerotome undergoes resegmentation, a very important concept. Resegmentation. In resegmentation, the caudal half of each sclerotome fuses with the cranial half of subadjacent sclerotome. So, there are two sclerotomes one is above and the other is below. The caudal half of the upper sclerotome fuses with the cranial half of the lower subadjacent sclerotome. So, in this way, <coughs> a vertebrae is being formed. At the same time, mesenchymal cells between the cephalic and the caudal parts of the original sclerotome fill the space between the two precartilaginous vertebral bodies. They form the intervertebral discs. <coughs> These are the intervertebral discs. Notochord regresses everywhere but in the region of the intervertebral disc. The remnant of notochord uh, um, in the intervertebral disc is the nucleus pulposus. This central dark blue area is the nucleus pulposus. Nucleus pulposus is surrounded by annulus fibrosus to form the... This is the annulus fibrosus. This surrounds the nucleus pulposus and this forms the intervertebral disc. The entirety of it. Now, the vertebral column. Um, resegmentation causes myotomes to bridge intervertebral discs. This gives it the capacity to move the spine. Uh, intersegment intersegmental arteries which were lying between sclerotomes now pass midway <laughs> over the vertebral bodies. Now this is an important aspect. Intersegmental arteries which were initially lying between the sclerotomes now they pass midway over the vertebral bodies. Why is that? Because resegmentation occurs. What was resegmentation? In resegmentation, the caudal part of the upper sclerotome and the crane, the caudal half of the upper sclerotome and the cranial half of the lower sclerotome, they kind of fuse. They form uh, the mesenchyme in between the, uh, um, the upper and the lower uh, sclerotomes they uh, form uh, the vertebral bodies and um, the, uh, the, up, uh, the cranial and the caudal halves of the upper and lower sclerotome they form the vertebral body. So in between um, uh, this um, resegmentation uh, myotomes uh, bridge the intervertebral discs it gives them the capacity to move the intersegmental arteries which were initially lying between the sclerotomes, the initial sclerotomes, now they pass midway over the vertebral bodies. Spinal nerves leave near the intervertebral discs and leave through the intervertebral foramina. So, uh, we have two primary curvatures in the vertebral column. Um, the, uh, there is a thoracic curve in the thoracic region. Obviously, it is very evident from the name. And there is a sacral curve from the sacral region. This is the thoracic curve, very evident. And this is the sacral curve. 
all right there are two secondary curves which are acquired as um, as the secondary traits throughout uh, th as the child progresses in the life cervical curve this cervical curve um, is um, attained when the child starts to hold his head all right in, in in the cervical region when the child starts to hold his head and the lumbar curve this area the lumbar curve um, is acquired when the child starts to walk so um, the vertebral column is divided into four sections the cervical uh, the thoracic section the uh, lumbar section and the sacrum and coccyx we have seven cervical vertebrae we have th 12 thoracic vertebrae we have five lumbar vertebrae and we have sacrum and coccyx that fuse together um, in the uh, to form the um, tail the, um, the tail of um, the vertebral column so we have two primary and two secondary curves the primary curves include thoracic and sacral curve this is the thoracic curve this is the sacral curve two secondary curves which are attained through development in life the cervical curve this 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 is the cervical curve it is attained when the child starts to hold his head and the lumbar curve this is the lumbar curve which is attained when the child starts to walk so now we'll talk about the clinical correlates the process of formation and rearrangement of segmental sclerotomes into definite vertebrae it is a complicated process so it's common to have successive vertebrae fuse asymmetrically or having half of a vertebrae missing. As I mentioned earlier, this vertebrae are formed by resegmentation in which uh, upper half of the upper, um, lower half of the upper sclerotome and upper half of the lower sclerotome fuses. Now, it is common to have um, asymmetrical fusing or having half a vertebra missing due to defects in this asymmetrical, uh, in this process. Um, it can cause scoliosis, which is lateral bending of the spine. Um, it can also cause clipple field sequence. There are fewer cervical vertebrae as seen in this child, fused or abnormal shaped other vertebrae might also be present. Now, um, continuing in on the clinical correlates, we have cleft vertebrae is a defect of imperfect fusion of no or non-union of the vertebral arches. Now, this is a very important clinical correlate. It may cause spina bifida. Again, very important, must be on your test. If not, you must learn it. You will see a patient or two of this condition for sure. Very, very important. Uh, there are two types of spina bifida. Spina bifida occulta is the first type. It is the condition in which only the vertebral arches are involved. The spinal cord is intact. The skin covers the defect and there are no neurological deficits. Now, the second type of um, spina bifida is spina bifida cystica. It is much severe than spina bifida occulta. Um, neural tube fails to close and the vertebral arches fail to form. So, we have neural tissue that is exposed. Neurological deficit depends upon the level and extent of the lesion, obviously. Uh, it can be prevented by taking folic acid prior to conception because folic acid aids in the formation of neural tube and hence these defects can be, uh, pro um, be, be prevented if folic acid is taken. So this was all about the clinical aspects of uh, uh, this slide it is a, it was a very important slide as we discussed spina bifida in this spina bifida is a condition uh, which commonly um, comes in your exams in your ward rounds in your vivas you must be prepared about it you must see the uh, videos the lectures the pictures to keep that in your mind for further details keep watching sicardia.com